Overconfidence is the second tendency that some people have in high pressure scenarios. Having a sense of confidence about yourself and your abilities is important. However, overconfidence can lead to failure. Overconfidence leads people to underestimate challenges and fail to ask whether their skills, experience, and knowledge are sufficient to accomplish the task at hand. An example of an overconfident response is refusing to consider alternatives to opinions and decisions. Because overconfident employees may act brashly, the consequences of their actions can be more damaging than those caused by overthinking. This is because their mistakes tend to be more elaborate and so require far more time and effort to resolve. Arrogance, if left unchecked, can lead to complacency. For example, you may become convinced that you no longer make trivial mistakes. Such a mindset makes it easy for you to miss simple errors in your work. Overconfidence can prevent you from seeking the help you may require to meet a given objective or achieve a set standard. This can lead you to repeat mistakes or get behind in your work. Just as overthinking results in too much attention, being paid to the possibility of failure, overconfidence often leads to too much focus on the expected rewards of success. In both cases, your focus is drawn away from the task at hand and directed to the outcome of the situation instead. Take Dwayne for example. He was recently promoted to the position of editor at a publishing house. Given an important manuscript, as his first task, he began to go through it not only making corrections, but also rewriting large sections that he felt were poorly researched and argued. In this case, Duane thought that he'd been given too easy a task to begin with, but that he'd improved it with his superior understanding of the subject matter. While working on the manuscript, Duane was offered help by experienced editors who remembered being bogged down by their first projects, but Dwayne refused assistance. He was so convinced of his skills that Dwayne felt he didn't need help to impress his superiors. However, when the manuscript's author read Dwayne's changes, he was offended. Dwayne hadn't realized that the author was an expert in the field and that his own grasp of the material was elementary in contrast to the author. He was so focused on his own ability and ambition to impress that he didn't bother to check who the author was. You can use several techniques to avoid overconfidence in high pressure situations. First, stay humble and accountable. Second, understand that good decision making requires you to know your limits. Third, make sure that you learn from your previous mistakes. Fourth, be realistic about the time and effort needed to complete tasks. And fifth, Make it a habit to think ahead. To guard against overconfidence, make an effort to stay humble and accountable. Consider Mark, who quickly completed what he thought was a routine budget analysis. However, his results differed from those expected. Rather than assume he was correct, he noted the disparity and asked a coworker for help. By admitting that he'd underestimated the challenge, They solved the problem together and Mark learned to be more careful in the future. Good decision making requires that you know the limits of your abilities and your knowledge. For example, once doubtful of his team's solution, Brian reluctantly admitted that he didn't share their technical understanding of the issue. Instead of arguing with them and asserting his authority, Brian asked his team to help him understand the issue. In this way, they reached an effective solution together. When things go wrong, it's important to analyze what went wrong and why, so you can learn from your mistakes. As an example, a few weeks ago, Susan made a scheduling error that resulted in several missed deadlines. Though she'd been doing the scheduling for years, Susan took the time to recognize how the problem occurred. Then she created a checklist that included 
what she learned so she wouldn't repeat the same mistake. Underestimating challenges can lead to costly errors. Aim to be realistic about the time and effort required for a task to avoid this. Take Thomas, for example, who needed to update an office's computer systems. Though he'd done similar jobs in the past, he still took care to budget his time realistically. Thomas gave himself extra time, which enabled him to solve an unforeseen problem while staying on schedule. Thinking ahead and asking what might go wrong is a helpful way to avoid errors due to overconfidence. For example, Yuan was leading a team of accountants through an important audit of a company. She began by considering what potential problems could arise. What if she were to lose any of her staff during this busy time? To ensure that work wouldn't be lost in such a scenario, she compiled a list of consultants that she could hire if this happened. Now let's try an exercise. Which examples describe effective ways to avoid being overconfident in high-pressure situations? You recognize that the figures you've been given may be flawed and distort your findings. You think you'll be able to complete a routine task in four days, but allow yourself a week in case of unexpected delays. You plan to consult an expert on an area which you are somewhat, but not completely, familiar with. You reaffirm that a mistake was made, but that you weren't to blame for your involvement. And you move forward from mistakes by forgetting about them and focusing on success. Now again, take a break, pause the video for a minute or two, and try to reflect on the right answer. And now let's review together. Option one, this option is correct. Thinking ahead about potential problems is a good way to keep yourself from acting overconfidently under pressure. Option two, this option is correct. Being realistic about the time and effort required is an important way to stay off overconfident tendencies. Option three, this option is correct. Understanding your limits and acknowledging the need for help is important for guarding against overconfidence. Option four, this option is incorrect. Part of avoiding overconfidence is being accountable when mistakes are made and being humble. Option five, this option is incorrect. It is important that you learn from your mistakes so as not to repeat them. This is a good way to keep from being overconfident. When under pressure, people may tend to overthink the situation or react with overconfidence. Each type of behavior has undesirable results. To avoid overthinking situations, you should try to stay focused on what you are doing and just do what you do. Remember to strive for progress and not perfection. And try to set a time limit for what needs to be done. Finally, try to break tasks into smaller ones that are more manageable. To resist the potentially damaging consequences of overconfidence, stay humble and accountable. Remember that good decision-making requires that you understand your limits. Make an effort to learn from your previous mistakes and stay realistic about the time and effort a task will take. Finally, get into the habit of thinking ahead about what may go wrong and plan for these possibilities. Next, a very simple exercise on countering overthinking. If you need help with this, please don't hesitate to ask. 